7 and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William Steam Locomotive Part 48. The metal arrives from Blackgate's engineering to make the front saddle tank mounting supports. I have spent a while thinking about the best way to make these components without them being too big and clumsy. And now, after unpacking the pieces of metal, I can get a clearer idea what they're going to look like. This clip shows four pieces of brass angle. All of these pieces of brass angle are one eighth of an inch thick, but I'm going to use the larger pair for this job, and they are one inch by one eighth of an inch thick. The small ones are one eighth of an inch thick, but only half an inch wide. I'm putting the pieces of metal in a carrier bag because I need to take them all up to the other workshop. This is the workshop attached to my house, and in this workshop I don't have either machining or drilling facilities. Now I'm in the other workshop, and before I start the job, I think it's time for a health and safety warning. The edges of newly cut on machine metal parts can be extremely sharp. This is especially true with sheet metal if a guillotine was used to cut it from a larger sheet. I recommend removing all sharp edges before using the parts to prevent personal injury. I ordered four pieces of 3mm thick steel sheet from Blackgates. I'm going to put the other two on one side because they're for another job. Into the outer part of the workshop now, where all my grinding and polishing equipment is. And I'm using the 4 inch belt sander to remove the sharp edges. This really is important. You would not believe how sharp the guillotine edges are. They're almost as sharp as razor blades. Later on in the day that I made this video, I was using some alcohol hand cleanser. And by the amount of pain I was getting from one finger, I must have cut it when I was doing this, and it was only the alcohol that brought it out. But I'm a big boy and quite brave, so it's not a massive issue, but it would have been had my finger have fallen off. I'm now going to show you the general plan of action. If you've been following this series, you will know that this engine was originally built as a really ugly, extremely tall side tank engine. I'm going to fit it with a saddle tank, and although it's not exactly the right size for a Sweet William, it's near enough for rock and roll. Here it is on the floor. And here are the two internal reinforcement blocks that I made in the last video. These will be fitted inside the saddle tank at the point where the supports touch the saddle tank. I thought it would be a good idea to make a pattern, so I just drew around the piece of metal, whilst holding the piece of metal on a piece of 3mm thick mahogany sheet. What I need to do next is change my bandsaw blade. I'm folding up the old blade because I prefer to do it this way, then I know that it's not going to be dangerous. I feel that it's only fair to warn viewers that this is quite a boring, routine sort of a video, but I suppose if you don't like it, you could have a look at my series Gynaecology for Beginners. I'm about to make a series called Alternative Uses for Viking War Axes. The first bit about gynaecology was a joke, but this actually isn't. I am going to make a series all about war axes and alternative uses for them. For the moment though, you'll have to be satisfied with watching me change the bandsaw blade. Here I fitted the guide in place, which makes it very easy to cut accurately on the bandsaw. That is, provided that the bandsaw blade is sharp, and as this one is a new one, it is sharp. And in no time at all, the blade cuts perfectly along the pencil line. The next thing to do is to hold the mahogany template against the main mounting because I need the finished mounting to follow the shape of the existing cross member. Now it's back to the bandsaw to cut this angle. To be honest, I didn't need to do this. I could have gone straight for the cut on the steel, but it's easier to cut wood than steel. Not only is the template cut to match the cross member, I'm going to use this to get the height of the saddle tank when I fit it to the engine. Using a piece of mahogany is just simpler. What I need to do now is chop this piece of steel into two pieces. And for this I'm using the larger of the two bandsaws that I have. This is a very old Draper horizontal vertical metal cutting bandsaw. I know that because it says it clearly on the label. Once I chopped the one foot length of steel in half, I transferred the angle at the end using the piece of mahogany and a pencil to the steel part and here I'm cutting it on the other bandsaw. 
This bandsaw is cutting very well since I changed the blade. The other blade was extremely blunt, and in no time at all had cut one of the parts. It was a simple job, and I had to repeat it on the other piece of steel, in exactly the same way. My workshop is very untidy, and usually around where I work, a box is full of tools. And today, I found this. This is a spring-type centre punch, and it doesn't usually make that type of sound. I ran the video to lower speed. My marking out is a bit chaotic. The first line was a bit too high up, so I moved it down. And now it's time to drill holes on the centre pops. The drill bit that I'm using is 3 16 of an inch in diameter, which is clearance size for 2BA. When I wind the handle on the cross vise mounted to the drilling table, the drill wanders about. The column is really poor on this. It's not a very good quality drilling machine. It's probably time to treat myself to a new one, because this really is poor. Apart from the column being a bit wobbly, even though it's bolted to the floor, the motor capacitor went ages ago and I have to spin it by hand in the direction I want it to go. Oh yes, and I changed the chuck for a proper Jacobs chuck, which is concentric. After drilling all these holes, there were burrs on the metal, so I removed the burrs using a large drill bit. You can do this by hand, but I thought I would use power assistance in the video. By doing it this way, every burr around the holes is removed very efficiently. And that is it for this episode. More metal bashing in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.